How's it going there fellow junkies, Drew Junkie here and in today's video we're going to be talking about my Nexus 9 and how to install a custom kernel on here and then how to play and manipulate some things on it. This was a request by the guys over at XDA, some of them in the forum. So we'll go ahead and show you how to do this. It should be pretty simple and let's get into it. and we're going to be talking about how to install the Elemental X kernel which you've seen on XDA. So to do it there are some prerequisites you're going to have to go ahead and um, have an unlocked bootloader which I already have on this device and besides that just basically plug it into your computer and uh, we'll be able to push this kernel over to the device. Now something I did do is I did do an, an two tongue, I don't know how I even say this, I did a benchmark Let's put it that way um, on this device, and I'll show you my score on that. Doop, 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 doop. There it is. This is the score I got with the stock kernel on my device. This is stock Nexus 9, 56,165. That is the benchmark. That's how they kind of rate the kernel um, and how it's running. Okay, so we've got our device plugged into our computer, we have ADB debugging on. You can see it, USB debugging, um, connected, all that stuff's turned on. You turn that on in settings, and obviously if you've unlocked your bootloader, you've probably done this because you turn on, tap your build number 10 times, turns on developer settings, then you turn on USB debugging right there, and boom, you're ready to flash a kernel. Like I said, does require an unlocked bootloader. If you don't have an unlocked bootloader, check out my playlist on this device. I do cover that route and everything else. So. Let's go over to my computer and let's check this out. Okie dokie. Alright, so here we are on the computer. This is the Elemental X N9 Alpha 0.06 kernel. And um, it does have quite a few features. So if you want to look through the features and see what it covers, you can look at the change log right here. And kind of see you have GPU overclocking if you want it. Um, a bunch of different things. XFAT support. Um, what else did I see here? Super SU support, so it does allow you to have that root access with Chainfire CF Auto Root. Um, initial overclocked to 2.5 gigahertz. It does have NTSF support also. So you can see there's some different things that you can do right here with this kernel that are unique. There's also some things you can change in here if you want by typing in some commands. Alright, so basically I would download the latest one, so I'm going to download this one, and you actually can see it, it's right there. Besides that, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our platform tools on the Android SDK. So, there's two options here. One is install the Android SDK. I can give you a link to it. Two would be download a folder that I can get, send you guys, give you a link to, that contains the Fastboot EXE and the ADB EXE and I think a couple of these ADB files. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my downloads. I'm gonna copy this over. Copy and paste in, paste, there we go. And that gives me the latest image right there. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and hold shift on our computer, right click, open a command window here. And this is gonna go ahead and allow us to do some commands to our device. So to make sure it's functioning correctly, my device actually just flipped off, turn it back on. Um, let me show you how to do this. So we're going to type in ADB devices and it should come back with a number and say device. Then we're going to do ADB reboot boot loader. I can spell correctly. Hit enter and your device is going to boot into bootloader mode and then we can go ahead and flash this uh, kernel. So to do it, it's pretty simple. You can do it two different ways. Uh, I'm gonna show you one way that I like to do it for testing, and then I'll show you, and then there's another way you can do it if you permanently like it. So for testing, what I would type in is fast boot devices. Make sure their drivers are functioning correctly in fast boot. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Hat. Fast boot devices. There you go, it comes back with a number and says fast boot. So then I type in fast boot boot 
space and then I would go ahead and copy or just drag this into the command window and then you can hit enter now if you do it this way it's going to go ahead and it's going to boot the kernel and you'll have it for one time of your device running once you reboot your device once you'll be back to your stock kernel if you do it the other way it'll be permanent so the other way of doing it we'll just go ahead and show you that too why not would be typing in fastboot flash so fastboot flash boot and then copying or dragging the image over and pasting it in that would be a permanent flash and that's going to re replace your current kernel with this kernel so you know what I'll actually do that this time for testing if you want to test it out and see if you like it I would do it the other way with fast boot f boot and then the kernel um, that way you can test it out so if you like it, if you like it then come back and do it this way um, if you don't like it just reboot your device and you're back to stock so I'm going to go ahead and flash it permanently for me and just go ahead and hit enter and it downloads it, it writes it and your device will reboot you're done on your computer that is it pretty simple to do guys very easy to do with the Android SDK or just a folder that has all of the tools in there oh huh. I was gonna say your device won't reboot if you flash it if you boot it it will reboot so since I flashed it I gotta come over here and scroll down with volume down and then hit power on when to highlight reboot and there you go that will boot the device up alright guys so here we go we are um, booted up here with the brand new kernel so first thing I want to do is I just want to run a new benchmark with this new kernel running and just kind of show you that I mean everything is pretty much you know pretty slick good to go uh, no problems there we'll double check root to make sure this kernel works with root it does you can see that everything is functional there um, let's go ahead and run a benchmark really quick this is a very nice benchmark app. It does, uh, does some pretty cool testing. So we'll go test again. And we'll go ahead and start it. I'm going to turn this thing around. It doesn't actually pop up. But when it runs the video, it'll be cool looking when it's like this. So we'll let that run. While that's running, let me talk to you about these couple commands that we have to do here. Um, if you want to change some of these kernel settings. Again, this would be on the application or on the form, I should say, on XDA and there are these couple commands we can do so let's just let this benchmark run through I'm a little curious normally I've seen quadrant and normally I like to use quadrant but I think this is a lot more advanced than quadrant if you really wanna you know tweak out your uh, CPU some of the other features that are pretty cool about this kernel is it does have USB fast charging so if you want USB fast charging what it does is it increases your input current from 500 milliamps to 900 milliamps which just makes your device charge faster your device is rated for I think like 1200 milliamps so it should be able to handle this newer faster charging uh, for the easy so if you want to enable that right now stock it's disabled but if you want to enable it like I said there are some commands we can put in uh, some of the other things you can do with it are overclock the GPU like I said you can overclock the CPU as well um, and certain different governors in there also so very very nice so there you go this is a little cool animation this is a ton of really fast moving android guys and jelly beans bouncing around the screen yeah pretty cool this is funny I don't I think this 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 graphic is kinda of funny it's very shaky and I don't know if that's part of the graphic or is that my graphics aren't that good on the device they couldn't be that that good because this thing has a Tegra K1 so I think that was just interesting that that's just how they do the graphic test maybe I don't know this is pretty cool graphics here a little video um, testing it you can see information right down here that says F frames per second right now about 42 44 a couple different things you they're testing right there and it should continue on through this test alright guys so here you go you can see that we improved well only about a thousand actually on our score with the stock settings of this kernel so um, let me just talk to you a little bit about how to adjust the things on here so if we come in here to 
Google. Let's do, we'll do a search really quick. And what I would do is I would go ahead and I would type in L M N T O L X, and then I would do space X D A Nexus Nine search, and hopefully this will bring us right to the thread, which it actually did. And then what I would do if you want to adjust some of your settings and run your quadrant again is come down here to right here. You can see it's got this different pieces of code. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one and see if I can highlight the whole thing here. There we go, docs. So I'll say new doc. We're going to go with paste. There it is. Beautiful. Now we got the code. So we're going to go over here and we're just going to highlight. That line. We'll copy it. And then we'll come up in here and we'll open terminal. And then we should be able to paste it. There it is. All right. So now we've got some code going. And then just go ahead and hit enter. And this should change your CPU frequency. Boom. Done. And you can do the same thing with your GPU. So let's do go ahead and might as well overclock your GPU as well. We'll go ahead and highlight it right there and then hit copy. And then we'll open up terminal again and we'll paste it and go ahead enter now you have overclocked your GPU and your CPU on your device and we'll run another quadrant and I'll just show it to you here as soon as we get this done well you know what that's a little bit interesting um, only picked up about 800 on my score by changing my uh, CPU and GPU but you know a higher score is a higher score and uh, very, very cool nonetheless. I'm going to take a quick little snapshot of this. Screenshot. And then we can actually go back really quickly and compare all three of them. And, and kind of look through how they did progress. So here we go. This is original stock kernel. This is the new kernel um, with no changes. And this is the kernel with overclocked, I mean, it's slightly overclocked, slightly overclocked GPU and CPU. So there you go. That's basically what I can show you about kernels. They do do a lot of things, and this guy does supposedly have an Elemental X application. I'll try to find a link to that and post it in the video description as well, which will give you a lot better interface and easier to overclock and underclock and all those kind of different things you guys want to change with a custom kernel. And that is the whole point of them. So there you go. Hope you guys like this little video here on installing a custom kernel on the Nexus 9. Most kernels are going to install this exact same way. Um, if you ever want to go back to stock, just take the stock firmware from Google, pull the boot image, and flash it just like you flashed this kernel, and you'll be back on the stock kernel. Pretty simple. So there you go. Stay tuned for more videos on here on the Nexus 9, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Root Junkie out. Yeah.